Hello Internet, and welcome back to my reviews of the John Wick films leading up to John Wick Chapter 4. Today, we're going to be taking a look at John Wick Chapter 2. Before we begin, I just want to pay my respects to Lance Reddick, who passed away on March 17th. Lance Reddick played Charon in the John Wick movies, and Chapter 4 will be one of his final film roles. And he is set to play Zeus in the upcoming Percy Jackson and the Olympian series on Disney+. He was only 60 when he died from natural causes. I just feel bad that he didn't live long enough to see John Wick Chapter 4. I always find posthumous releases to be bittersweet. Such is the case with Cocaine Bear when Ray Liotta passed away on May 26, 2022, Star Wars The Last Jedi with Carrie Fisher, and The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger. Released on February 10, 2017, John Wick Chapter 2 continues the vengeful odyssey of John Wick, played once again by the national treasure himself, Keanu Reeves. We also have Lawrence Fishburne as the Bowery King, who is an underground crime lord. This is Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne's first collaboration since The Matrix. And I was very upset when Lawrence Fishburne got the boot from the Matrix Resurrections. Same with Hugo Weaving. Like seriously, what the fuck were they thinking recasting iconic roles? I can understand them recasting roles for certain characters like Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, the Joker, the Hulk, and James Bond. But there are certain characters who are played by actors who are irreplaceable. For example, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow, Pedro Pascal as Din Djarin, Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, Robin Williams as the Genie, the entire cast of The Lord of the Rings, Lawrence Fishburne as Morpheus, and Hugo Weaving as Agent Smith. The Matrix of Arrestions, just out of nowhere, gave Lawrence Fishburne and Hugo Weaving the boot without warning, which I find to be complete bullshit! We also see John Leguizamo return in his role as the owner of a high-end chop shop, who we saw in the first movie very briefly. And we also have the return of Ian McShane and Lance Reddick. And for some fucking reason, they cast Ruby Rose in this movie, who I heard was terrible as Batwoman. But then again, I'm in no rush to see Arrow or any of the Arrowverse shows. I've already got enough shows on my list to binge the shit out of, like Ted Lasso, Invincible, and Star Wars Rebels to name a few. It starts off with John Wick getting his car back, until it gets totaled in an opening fight sequence. And he is then visited by an Italian crime boss who forces him into assassination. Wick says no since he is retired, and in return, his home gets destroyed. All because he wasn't allowed to say no since it was a blood oath, an unbreakable contract. Or, as they say in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, an unbreakable vow. He is then reminded by Winston that he's not allowed to say no to a marker, and he's not allowed to kill someone on continental grounds. Otherwise, he would be declared excommunicado. When one is declared excommunicado, they are revoked all access to continental services, and their lives are forfeit. Eventually, at the very end of the movie, John is declared excommunicado for putting a bullet in the crime boss's head. The crime boss then asks John Wick to kill his sister in Rome so he can claim his seat at the high table. If you don't know what the High Table is, the High Table is a council of 12 high-level crime bosses. Think the Jedi Council from the Star Wars prequel trilogy, but way more dark and fucked up. Ruby Rose plays a mute bodyguard sent by the crime boss to observe John's actions. Oh wait, that's the wrong Ruby Rose! Damn it! Anyway, Ruby Rose's character doesn't talk. She just communicates through sign language. And when John Wick arrives in Rome to kill the crime boss's sister, she commits suicide. John then puts a bullet in her head, thus fulfilling his marker. Then we get an intense fight scene with bullets blazing, bloody kills, and on-point headshots that are damn near impossible to achieve in such games as Call of Duty, Uncharted, or The Last of Us. Of course, I don't play Call of Duty, but I have played Uncharted and The Last of Us. So John then gets into a fight with his sister's bodyguard, but their fight takes them onto a continental grounds, so they stop fighting, and they buy each other drinks. Soon after, John Wick has a $7 million bounty on his head, and we get a random montage of fight scenes against some assassins who were sent text messages from the high table to kill him. One of the most creative kills in the entire movie involves him pulling a Heath Ledger Joker and making a number two pencil disappear. How about a magic trick? I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. Ta da! It's. it's gone. You and Morpheus reunite on screen, albeit with Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne playing different roles. And Fishburne agrees to help him out by giving him a gun with only seven rounds. Think Jack Sparrow's single shot from the Curse of the Black Pearl, but John Wick gets lucky, unlike Jack Sparrow. So he goes to an art museum, where a gala is taking place, and he shoots the place up. And one of the coolest looking bits of cinematography involves John Wick shooting bad guys left and right while in a hall of mirrors. Even to this day, I'm still blown away with how they were able to pull that off. And that's one of my favorite scenes in Chapter 2, other than him killing someone with a number 2 pencil. The crime boss then makes his way into the Continental in New York to seek sanctuary, John Wick then comes in to finish the job. He shoots the crime boss in the head, on continental grounds, and thus he is declared excommunicado. 
And he has a one hour head start before he's officially declared excommunicado by the high table. And he has no choice but to run away. I'm giving John Wick Chapter 2 a 10 out of 10. Each new entry in the series ups the ante. It gets more exciting and action packed, and I'm all for it. I love Keanu Reeves as usual, and I really enjoyed seeing a Matrix reunion with Keanu and Lawrence Fishburne. But for some reason, they did not include Carrie Ann Moss or Hugo Weaving. But who am I to complain? Everything about this was an improvement over the first film, with the stakes being much higher, and the cinematography being on point. Why these movies weren't nominated for Oscars is beyond me. Stay tuned for my upcoming review of John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum coming this week. Until then, I'll see you all next time.